Okay, this is video two of two. Um, I didn't want to kind of scrunch all of this in, but these are decorations uh, that I put up this year. These are, this is a, a collection that I have. This is in the dining room. And um, I started collecting, oh gosh, 30, 40 years ago. No, 30 years ago. Um, I love the vintage bottle brush trees. And I started collecting them. You can see I've gotten quite a few. My husband collects pewter. He loves pewter. And so it's become the perfect backdrop for all of the the um, little trees that I've made. Here we have a little diorama that my mother created. It's uh, ceramic and she painted it. It's so sweet. Here are some of the... Um, The trees some people think they look ugly I just think they look amazing because they've been through so much and then I have a collection of Santa's to go with them now some of these are are new um, this one here is new any of them with the red base are old and you can tell I've decorated a lot of them. Um, that one is, is that a new one or an old one? That one's relatively new. Here's the oldest one I have. It didn't have a, a bottom to it, so I just, I need to antique that red part to make it look older. But um, I just stuck it in a little spool and painted it red. And you can see I've decorated them I bought these, um, collected over the years, some the cotton spun pieces of fruit and put those in there or little glass balls. Let me see that. And up here, I've had a lot of fun with them. <laughs> little tiny mouse Santa's that people have either given me or this sweet little tree is from my friend Peaches kind of hard to see with that backdrop so I'm going to pick it up and put it over here and you can see it it's a 12 days of Christmas tree isn't that sweet she and I went to an antique mall in this, earlier in December and I saw it first and I thought well I, I think She'll probably want it, so I put it down. And then a little stinker, she managed to hide it from me and purchased it for me and gave it to me later. I did not catch on at all. Sweet, sweet lady. So there we have this. And let me come back here. Hopefully not trip on anything. But that's one of the first things that I decorate. Um is this so you can see it takes quite a bit okay here we have a hanging corner cupboard and it has a collection of Santas that I got let me open it up for you the majority of these Santas came from Germany when we were stationed there the retired army and we were in three different places Wiesbaden, Mannheim and uh, Nuremberg and then uh, the little trees are are new I just added those in and then this one this one this one and this one they belong to my grandmother so I just have them all nestled in there for the smaller ones so sweet there's this store in Germany or at least it used to be in the 80s and it's called Verkauf it's kind of like a um, a Walmart and they had these little ornaments for like 10 15 cents a piece and they were in this great big cardboard bin I mean huge bin like half as tall as I am and 
So I, I tell people I went bin diving for them. <laughs> okay, I'm going to come back here. I'm going to turn the light off because I want you to see. Maybe it'll show up. Here's the candelabra that I, that I did. I just did sticks and red berries and greenery. I don't know if it'll show up if I light it up or not. Let me let me try it. Yeah, it's showing up a little bit. You can see. So that turned out pretty well. Of course, my daughter, she's tall. She's like 5'11 or something. And when she was visiting, she kept poking her eye with a stick. The sticks are fake, by the way. They bend. That's what I really love about them. I got them at Hobby Lobby several years back. I tried using regular sticks, but they, they make a mess and they crack and then they break and they don't bend <laughs> when I want them to. And then I was in Hobby Lobby one day and I saw these and they, they actually bend. I mean, it's, but they look so real. So here they are. All right. So I think we're going to the final tree now and this is the traditional tree. So hold on just a moment. And here we have the final tree. This is the traditional tree. It's a little packed. <laughs> I have it lit, um, and then I have the blinds behind them drawn. I may turn it off so that I'm not sure which one shows better, but it has everything on it, that like ornaments that the girls have made, my granddaughter has made, my son and uh, my, not my son-in-law, my two grandsons, um, it just and then reminders of silly things that you know we've had over the years things from people who've left us that are very special just all kinds of everything on there little cross stitch when um I think we're in man no texas I did little cross stitch ornaments and Nigel was skiing, learning to ski or probably not learning. He'd been skiing. I can't swim. Um, sadly enough, I panic. But here he was telling me how easy it was to water ski. So I did a funny little cross stitch with the skis going in different directions and he's telling me it's easy. It's that kind of stuff. Um, my youngest daughter with her two grandsons when they were little. That was an angel that was given to me by Valerie, my mother-in-law, uh, when my grand passed. Sweet friend Sherry Wilson gave me that one. Welcome us to this home. We've been here 30, let's see, we got here in 91. So it's been 32 years, I think. I think I've got that right. Isabel's little Christmas book. little red bird that belonged to my grandmother. She loved it. She loved red birds. Little ornament there of a ladder and stuff. This is to show how Nigel is always working on something. Our little cotton bowl ornament. Funny story, when uh, Nigel's cousins were here, they were visiting Marion and Gary and their family and they had never seen cotton and we were driving it was around summertime or whenever cotton um, i should know that because i've picked it but whenever it comes in bloom we were driving along a street and all of a sudden marianne yells out stop <laughs> and Nigel thought something was wrong and we didn't realize they were seeing a field of cotton for the first time you know we take a lot of things for granted and and we'd never realized that you know they don't have fields of cotton there they're an island so it was kind of a sweet reminder that's a little ornament my mom made. and Well, here's the corn popper. Nigel, he loves to get all of the family who have babies, he loves to get their corn poppers for them. He got us one. I think I had him, or I did it. Uh, we took out the popper because I couldn't stand it. Sweet little ornament from my friend Jadine. She's passed away now. She and I went through the Gulf War in Nuremberg while our husbands were deployed. My grandmother made that, the little gingerbread man, and our wonderful friend, Jenny Lavender, gave us the globe because she said, you're going to be traveling all over the world in the army, and she's right. 
my husband and granddaughter. The armadillo is from Texas. Just neat, fun things that they've made. And I, I candles, you can see candles on here. Because again, the original trees had candles. And so I just tie them on the leaves. You'll see a couple of little red bugs. And uh, the first car we had when we were married was a VW. And, I, and there were little black racing stripes across. And I thought that was sweet. So that's what we've got on the tree. Just fun stuff. That was one of the boys just made that ornament. It's from my... Um, the children's great aunt Doreen, she a fabulous knitter and she knitted all these ornaments and right now there's a mouse in there and a little letter she did that a little Old Spice, my father always wore Old Spice and I found that, it's a little Avon thing I thought that was appropriate but again just Lots of fun memories. And um, again, I use these as scrapbooks of our life. And I'm going to pan back. And you can see this is the, the other piece that belonged to my Grandma Hoffman. And it's a music box that plays Silent Night. And then over here, the last, <laughs> the last thing, I promise is um these are ornaments when we were first married as i said we didn't have a penny to our name nigel was an e3 in the army and i wasn't working i was pregnant with laura my oldest and um so without any money i i sent off for this free magazine from morton salt and it was showing how to make salt dough ornaments and i had some old tempera paints from before i married i save a lot of things and um, so I made these ornaments, and everyone that year got something made out of bread dough. It was a lot of fun, a lot of happy memories. I didn't think my husband liked them that much, but one year I didn't put them out. And he was like, where are they? I was like, oh, well, I, you need to put those out, Jen. Da -da. So that made me feel good. But these are what's left. The key to this is when you do them, you make sure that you varnish them heavily because if any moisture gets to them, they crumble. But this is the, um, and I think we put, uh, you know, paper ornaments that we just made on the tree. We didn't have a big tree or anything. Nothing like what I do now at all. And I didn't start all of these um, trees um, until the kids were like, you know, grown really and or, or late teens and that's when I slowly started putting it together. But anyway, um, that is it. <laughs> um, I hope you've all had a blessed Christmas. Um, and I hope that this new year, 2023, is a peaceful one. So here we have it. Merry Christmas and may God bless. Bye-bye.